Now, there was a report. So, 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 so the demand for an investigation into the Democrats was part of the reason that he it was ordered on to withhold funding to Ukraine. The, the look back to what happened in 2016 certainly was, was part of the thing that he was worried about in corruption with that nation. And that is holding, absolutely appropriate. Holding the funding. Yeah, which, which ultimately then flowed. But to be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the, into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we, do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. We were holding up money at the same time for, uh, what was it, the Northern Triangle com countries. We were holding up aid at the Northern Triangle countries so that they, uh, so that they would change their policies on immigration. By, by the way, and this speaks to it. This speaks to an important. I'm sorry. This speaks to an important point because I heard this yesterday, and I can never remember the gentleman who testified. Was it McKinney the guy? Is that his name? From, I don't, don't know him. He testified yesterday. And if you go, and if you believe the news reports, okay, because we've not seen any transcripts of this. The only transcript I've seen was Sondland's testimony morning, this morning. If you read the news reports and you believe them, what did McKinney say yesterday? Well, McKinney said yesterday that he was really upset with the political influence in foreign policy. That was one of the reasons he was so upset about this. And I have news for everybody. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. I'm talking Just to Mr. Moving. Carl. Uh, that is going to happen. Elections have consequences. And foreign policy is going to change from the Obama administration to the Trump administration. And what you're seeing now, I believe, is a group of mostly career, polit uh, career bureaucrats who are saying, you know what, I don't like President Trump's politics, so I'm going to participate in this witch hunt that they're, that they're undertaking on the Hill. P elections do have consequences, and they should, and your foreign policy is going to change. Obama did it in one way, we're doing it in a different way, and there's no problem with that. This is Trump's chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, blowing a hole in the White House's only remaining defense by admitting to a quid pro quo during a press conference at the White House. He acknowledged that part of the reason military aid to Ukraine was withheld was in exchange for a promise to investigate this Ukraine DNC server conspiracy theory, which, to be clear, is an absolute joke. It is a debunked conspiracy theory regarding a cybersecurity firm called CrowdStrike. The DNC paid CrowdStrike to investigate the hack of its server in 2016, which the company determined emanated from Russia. This finding was then confirmed by the entire intelligence community. But the Republicans are claiming that this was all one big conspiracy, that CrowdStrike was just conspiring with the Democrats to malign Russia, and that in reality, it was the Ukrainians, not the Russians, who were behind the DNC hack, and that the Ukrainians framed the Russian government to make it look like they were working with the Trump campaign. In other words, they're basically trying to claim that the entire Russia investigation was based on false pretenses. Of course, it wasn't, and the intelligence community as well as Mueller's investigation proved that conclusively. Even Trump's own former Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert spoke with George Stephanopoulos and condemned the White House for continuing to give oxygen to what he called a deeply disturbing conspiracy theory. Now, what the president is referring to there is a debunked conspiracy theory that somehow Ukraine, not Russia hacked the Democratic emails in 2016 and that Ukraine might have the DNC server or Hillary's emails. The details are both convoluted and false. And during your time in the White House, you explained that to the president, right? I did. It's not only a conspiracy theory, it is completely debunked. You know, I, I'm, I don't want to be glib about this matter, but uh, last year, uh, retired former Senator Judd Gregg wrote a piece in The Hill magazine saying, the three ways or the five ways to impeach oneself. And the third way was to hire Rudy Giuliani. And, and at this point, I am deeply frustrated with what he and the legal team is doing and repeating that debunked theory to the president. It sticks in his mind when he hears it over and over again. And for clarity here, George, let me just again repeat that it has no validity. The United States government reached its conclusion on attributing to Russia the DNC hack in 2016 before it even communicated it to the FBI and long before the FBI ever knocked on the door at the DNC. So a server inside the DNC was not relevant to our determination, to the attribution. It was made up front and beforehand. And so while servers can be important in some of the investigations that followed, it has nothing to do with the U.S. government's attribution 
of Russia for the DNC hack. And yet that the White House continues to refer to it as if there's even a shred of legitimacy to it is evidence that they're just partisan hacks looking for any tenuous excuse to justify breaking the law. But BS excuse or not, that doesn't change the fact that Mulvaney's admission is an absolute disaster for the administration, which has desperately, desperately sought any excuse possible to insulate itself from impeachment. They tried to hide the summary of the phone call to protect Trump. They attacked Adam Schiff for correctly advising the whistleblower to file a complaint with the Intel Community Inspector General. General. They said the whistleblower was a partisan despite not knowing who it was and that the complaint was completely corroborated. They said the whistleblower couldn't come forward with secondhand information even though it's perfectly legal to do so. They said the whole impeachment process is unconstitutional despite it being in the constitution. And now, after all of that, the last shred of misguided hope they had was pinned on this pretense that there was no quid pro quo, despite the fact that Trump withheld $250 million in military aid and only released it after securing the promise of an investigation into Joe Biden by the Ukrainians, despite the fact that the Ukrainians themselves admitted that they believed opening an investigation was the only way to restart talks about getting their aid, despite the fact that Trump himself was caught on camera saying that he hoped the call with Ukraine would result in an investigation into his top political opponent. Well, I would think that if they were honest about it, they'd start a major investigation into the Biden. It's a very simple answer. Uh, they should investigate the Biden. But now, that defense is, like every other defense, useless thanks to Mulvaney. And this comes at a really, really bad time for the White House, when testimonies are happening as we speak, at which Democrats are trying to prove a quid pro quo. Only, I suppose at this point, the hearings are moot, considering the chief of staff just handed them exactly what they needed on national television. Now, Mulvaney will undoubtedly claim that he stands by his statement, but we've seen this strategy before, wherein the Trump administration tries to normalize this type of illegal behavior by casually saying it out loud and then shrugging it off. They're trying to will into existence the idea that if we become used to it, it won't carry the same weight and maybe public opinion will shift away from impeachment. That we'll get scandal fatigue just like we did with Trump's Russia saga. The only difference is that unlike the Russia scandal, this one is actually sticking. Trump is in the process of being impeached. So while the obfuscation and diversionary tactics might have worked for the GOP for the last three years, this is an entirely different ballgame. And Mulvaney seems to have just lost it for the White House.